It's been well over a decade since we've seen the Hummer brand in America, and for its glorious return, GM has decided to reintroduce this brand within GMC as an electric subdivision. They're calling it the 2022 GMC Hummer EV Pickup. This is a very important vehicle launch for GM because this is the first vehicle to be built off of the company's new 800 volt Altium battery architecture, which means this Edition 1 model that I'm showing you has three electric motors, up to 1,000 horsepower, a massive 200 kilowatt hour battery pack and up to 329 miles of all-electric range. GMC is calling this an all-electric super truck or the first of its kind. So to test out this vehicle, I'm actually out here at a desert about an hour north of Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to drive this vehicle off-road. We're going to drive it on-road. We're also going to launch it using the WTF launch control. And we're going to find out, has GMC truly delivered an all-electric super truck? Stay tuned to find out. So let's talk about the design of the brand new 2023 GMC Hummer EV truck. First of all, you're never going to mistake this thing for anything but a Hummer because it has the, all the traditional Hummer styling traits here. The characteristic seven slot grille, which I'm not entirely sure that was either Hummer or Jeep that did it first. But as you can see, GM has brought it into the modern 21st century with an all LED light signature. It even spells out Hummer in each of the seven slots, which each with each individual character. The uh, portion right here, this is for the LED turn signal. You can see it's a sequential design. And for those of you who are wondering, this is not the headlight. The headlight is actually down here where it's the low and high beam. There are no fog lights on this vehicle. Uh, this particular one here is a first edition. It's painted in interstellar white. It also has this kind of really cool hood graphic that you can get as a dealer accessory. It goes well with the rest of the black accents along the front bumper. Of course, because it's a Hummer, you have these massive D tow hooks here, which are painted in bronze. This is a dealer accessory. You have this huge skid plate down here to uh, again, help you when you're driving the vehicle off-road. The approach angles and departure angles for this vehicle have been set up, of course, to allow you to get maximum off-road capability, the best ground clearance, etc. But Overall, you can really tell just how wide this truck is. Now, in terms of the size of this vehicle, GMC says this truck here is almost 87 inches wide. That's without the side mirrors included. In comparison, the Hummer H2 is roughly about 82 inches wide. So because it's over 80 inches wide, you're going to notice on the roof over there, there are the three LED clearance lights. That's necessary for vehicles that are over 80 inches wide to kind of showcase this vehicle is wide. This is going to be a problem for those of you who live on narrow city streets, but that's always been the Hummer way. This has always been a massively wide vehicle that's just kind of excessive. That's the way the Hummers have always been. Now, coming around the side of the vehicle, let's talk about uh, what the EV truck is going to be. Now, Hummer is going to be launching this as the EV truck first, and then you can also get an SUV. The SUV will be available in uh, late 2023. And in terms of the dimensions, uh, this will be offered in just one configuration. It's gonna come with four full-size doors and a five-foot bed at the back. Its wheelbase is around 135 inches long, and its overall length is around 216 0.8 inches long. Now, for comparison purposes, compared to something like an F-150, this is about 14 inches shorter. Uh, this vehicle is about the same size as the Rivian R1T, which is the main competitor along with the upcoming Tesla Cybertruck, if Tesla ever decides to finally offer that vehicle as a real production car. Now, being a Hummer, you're probably wondering, what are the wheels like? Well, these are an accessory wheels with the tech bronze finish, just like on the front. These are uh, an 18 inch design. They're wrapped in Goodyear Wrangler uh, Duramat, or Duralwall all-terrain all tires, territory mud terrain tires. These are a 35 inch tall tire. Uh, this is gonna be standard equipment on every Hummer EV. You can also spec in a 37 inch tall tire. Now you can't get that from the factory, but GMC has already confirmed that a 37 inch tall tire will fit. And in terms of the ground clearance, this vehicle, since it's built on the Altium platform, is not a traditional body on frame. Obviously, it's got a battery pack that lines the floor. It's a massive battery pack. It provides basically the structure and the backbone of the vehicle. And you have a four corner all independent air suspension that's standard on the first edition model. I'm not entirely sure if GM will make it standard on the lower trims, which will be coming in 2023 and 2024. This is at the standard ride height. You get just over 10 inches of ground clearance. However, if you jack the vehicle up into an extract mode, it can actually lift the vehicle up by six inches. So you have nearly 16 inches of ground clearance. That would give it almost best in class ground clearance. It allows this truck to ford water up to 32 inches deep. So nearly three feet deep of water. So that's all very impressive stuff that we expect from the Hummer brand. Now looking at the 
rest of the profile here, you're gonna notice the side mirrors um, have an integrated turn signal. You have cameras around the vehicle. There's a total of nine cameras around this vehicle, giving you 18 different views, including an under view view uh, when you guys are going over some off-road terrain where you can see rocks and stuff as you go over the terrain. The roof panel you can see is completely blacked out because there's uh, these removable panels here. There's up to four panels that you can essentially take off along with a T-talk design in the roof to give you, again, that open air experience that I wasn't expecting Hummer to do. This is actually a convertible if you want to take off all the roof panels and lower down the rear window. Now looking over here at the rest of the profile, um, the bed, like I said, is only five feet. There's only one size bed uh, and the charge port you can see is also found right here. If you guys want to DC fast charge the vehicle, this will accept up to 350 kilowatts, which means you'll get up to 100 miles of range in just 10 minutes. GM told me that you'll you should expect to go from 20 to 80 percent in roughly 45 minutes. Remember, this is a massive battery pack, even though we're using that big 350 kilowatt DC fast charger. Now, looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see a lot of traditional Hummer styling cues, especially with the taillights, which have kind of the black out look around the actual taillight module. It's a full LED. It's not a sequential turn signal like it is on the front. I also like the tech bronze that you get as an accessory where it spells out Hummer EV. There's also the tow hooks over here. Uh, looking at the rear, you can see very nicely finished underneath here because they wanted to give it a cleaner underbelly for aerodynamics. Although this vehicle itself isn't the most aerodynamic because it is a box but efficiency has never really been a concern for uh, any type of Hummer vehicle. Now, opening up the tailgate, this does have the multi-pro tailgate as standard. This is something that I showed you first on uh, the GMC Sierra. You can see you can open up the tailgate the traditional way, or I can also push on this little button here, and this will open up the tailgate uh, in this manner here, where you can actually use this almost like a table. And if you open up the tailgate completely, which you have to close this first, push this button here, and then push another button here. You can see this one here has an accessory that allows for speakers back here, but you can actually use this as almost like a tailgate step to kind of help you get into the truck. And as you can see, looking at the bed, this vehicle has a five foot bed with a standard spray and bed liner. Uh, you can also get it with a bunch of LED lighting. GM will also offer uh, an onboard generator that you can use to actually power equipment from the actual internal or from the battery pack the 200 kilowatt hour battery pack. The tailgate itself, the mid gate does not fold down. So this isn't something like the new Chevrolet Silverado EV. The rear window does fold down. This one here has a manual tonneau cover, but you can also get a power uh, operated one, uh, which will be nice. Uh, and GMC says you can carry uh, roughly uh, 1500 pounds of payload in the bed, which is pretty competitive. This will tow a maximum of 7,500 pounds, which is on the low end. Cause remember this is going to compete with things like the uh, uh, Rivian R1T, the upcoming Ford Lightning, which I believe those models will tow well over 10,000 pounds. So now that we've talked about the exterior of this electric super truck, let's go ahead and hop inside and show you guys this interior because it also has a very modern environment. Nothing like the old truck, which again was discontinued back in 2009. Now, first of all, getting into this truck, it does have an air suspension. However, the lowest mode has a little over 10 inches of ground clearance. So somebody like myself, you're going to really appreciate the step rails here along with the grab handle because you're going to be having to pull yourself up to get into this truck. And once you get in, you're going to notice the door here is completely frameless because you can take off these roof panels. There's a total of four panels that gives you kind of a full convertible experience. You can even take out this side structure here or the center structure here to give the front seat occupants that full convertible experience. Now getting in, you can see there's a grab handle right here instead of on the actual lower portion. Once you get in and shut the, the door, it has a nice solid sounding funk. Actually, the, the, the doors themselves, they feel really light. So I really like uh, that, uh, that little detail there. I'm showing you guys the key fob here, you can see here is the uh, traditional key. Uh, it's a smart key access system that I've seen before on other Chevy products. However, instead of uh, the typical logos, you can see there's a GMC logo there and it also says Hummer EV. Now, I do believe that they do offer an app that you can access the vehicle. However, I'm at a very brief first drive, so I'm not going to be able to show you guys what the app is like. Uh, once you get in uh, and want to start the vehicle up, the button to fire everything up is right here. Uh, not really blocked by the steering wheel, but you can't probably really see it over from that side. But once you do that, put your foot on the brake turn everything on, you can see in here, it's got the very traditional GM chimes and you're greeted with this huge wall of screens. In fact, there's a 13.4 inch touch screen here. That's going to be standard. And then you have a 12.3 inch screen over here. You can see there's your wireless Apple CarPlay. You have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, I'm noticing the CarPlay screen doesn't take up the entire display here. I'm not entirely sure you can expand this. I don't think you can. 
uh, but I'll have to fiddle around with it a little bit more. But you can see with 13.4 inches here, 12.3 inches here, and you have a digital camera review mirror, it certainly gives you that modern look. And I also uh, applaud uh, GMC for kind of keeping it a little bit more simple. There are a simple yet traditional because there's traditional big buttons uh, if you want to access things like your climate, uh, the front and rear locking differentials, your parking sensors, and then the steering wheel you can see. They've gone with a three-spoke design. It's got the um, the Super Cruise function on. So it's got the Super Cruise with the active lane changing, which I've tested on the new Escalade. That's gonna be standard on this model here. And then the wheel itself is a power tilt and telescoping. I expected all this stuff because remember, the one that I'm sitting in has a six-figure price tag because this is the most expensive model. Now, because of that over $100,000 price tag, let's talk about the interior materials before we talk about the tech. Now, first of all, there's this whole interior is covered with almost like a faux leather material that feels very durable. It feels waterproof. The seats, you can see it's covered with that material. They're perforated. Um, they're heated and ventilated. No massaging seat function. You can see there's this area right here where it shows you the Hummer EV uh, badge on the actual seat itself. This could be a problem for those of you uh, if they if it might like dig into your back. It's not really a problem for me, but try the seats out before you uh, buy the vehicle. You can see the headrest uh, has more perforation. This feels more like a real leather material as opposed to the kind of faux uh, leather material that you find on the rest of the seats and the center console. The door panel you can see has that same kind of texturized rubber look to it with some genuine stitching. It's padded right here, padded down here. The window controls, all of them are one touch automatic up and down, which is nice. They have the newer controls. You have two, two person memory on the driver's side with an aluminum accented door handles. The dashboard you can see uh, has a very interesting look with the tech bronze that you see on the outside kind of carrying over into the interior of the vehicle. You have some unique Edition 1 badging. The airbag cover you can see is soft touch injection molded plastic along this area. This area here is a hard touch plastic. Uh, you don't get an actual heads up display, but there is like a sensor here or a little LED light for the automatic emergency braking. Instead, GM kind of puts everything in this 12.3 inch display. Now this is cu slightly customizable. You can kind of manipulate the screen over here by changing the displays using this controller over here. This will also change to a dark mode when you have the vehicle um, or when you're driving the vehicle at night because it is a very bright display. And then over here, GM actually partnered with Epic Games to develop the software for this new infotainment system. It's basically different from all the other GMs that I've tested. If you start using the screen, you can see a lot of the graphics and a lot of the um, controls, a lot of the widgets are slightly different. You can see there's a full 360 camera on this vehicle. In fact, there's up to 18 different camera views because of the nine cameras around the vehicle. You can see there's so many ways that I can swipe. There's where you can see the under floor view or the undercarriage view uh, of the actual truck when you're off-roading, uh, which is really cool. You can also look what's in the bed if you'd like. Uh, you can also kind of swipe over here and show all these different views and angles. You can use a trailer uh, backup camera over here, your blind zone cameras over there. So this is all very nice stuff. The Graphics also look good, although I'm noticing on some of these cameras, it's a little bit grainier than I expected. But we'll, we'll be driving this vehicle out on the road tomorrow. We'll be able to test it out even further. Uh, going over here and pushing on this, this is where you access all your different settings. You can see there's all these different uh, little menus where it shows you your off-road, uh, the pitch and the roll. It shows you your uh, wheels and your air pressure over there. And then this all looks pretty cool. Um, when you click on that, you can see Google Maps is going to be built into this vehicle. This almost looks like Android Automotive or Android Auto. So this is actually their newer, newest system that you're also going to be finding in the newest versions of the Sierra and the uh, Silverado. This is actually built off of Android Automotive. So that's why it has that Google Maps that's already built into the actual screen. Now, if I start fiddling with the drive mode selector, I want you to watch the screen because check this out. As soon as I start fiddling with this, it shows you your different drive modes. And look at those graphics, guys. That literally looks like a video game. And it doesn't surprise me because it was designed by Epic Games, uh, who, again, GMC partnered with um, to help create the graphics for this vehicle. This is where you're going to access all the different drive modes, including the WTF mode, which we're going to be trying out later on in the video. Um, which really gives this truck a modern feel. This is something that I've never seen before uh, with such beautiful graphics. I think this is going to be a huge selling factor for all of you techies out there who just expect and see or demand the best. Now over here, you can see lots of traditional buttons for your dual zone climate control. You have heated and ventilated seats, which once I push that, you can see it comes up as another icon that expands out. So I think that's a really cool design. Uh, you can also uh, access it through just touching the screen over there. Uh, the climate controls you can see are also down here. Uh, this actually looks a lot more or a lot better in person than I uh, first saw it in pictures. The graphics just look a little basic, but once you start using them, you can see as it expands out, it looks very modern. This, however, is just kind of like a carryover from other GM products. You can see your rear air vents are over here. You have a wireless phone charging pad over here. 
you have two USB charging ports. Your gear selector is down here. You can see it's an electronic selector. You push this little trigger button and then push it all the way up to go to drive, kick it all the way back to go to uh, reverse and then drive and then push the P button to go to park. Your drive mode selector is over here. You can also raise and lower the air suspension. You have cup holders over here and then there's a nice big padded armrest over here with additional uh, additional areas where you can put some phone or uh, keys. Open this up. You can see the center console is pretty deep, actually. Uh, there's a nice little two-tier storage. There's a traditional power outlet in here, a 12 volt. There's a little bit of LED lighting, uh, which is nice. And then coming over here to the glove box, you can see it's a really far reach because this vehicle is so wide. It's a bin style. It's a little on the small side, but you do get some more storage here on the center console, which helps to kind of mitigate that. Above me, no sunroof, but again, you have these freedom panels or these uh, sky view panels that come out uh, and you can actually get the full open air experience. These are glass, so it's basically a, a glass roof. They're very darkly tinted, which is good because there's no actual retractable sunshade here, but it really makes the cabin feel Feel modern it feels airy it's very wide so you kind of get an expansive view uh, out of the on the road and you get a ton of space in here and then I imagine when you take off these panels uh, it really gives you that open air experience which I wasn't expecting so really only something like the Jeep Gladiator would give you that similar experience but it was really unexpected for GM to give us a convertible option uh, within this truck so GMC will only offer the Hummer EV as a four-door, which means you're going to get all the extra space in the back seat. Now, before I get in here, I want to show you guys the underseat storage. Now, uh, tr trucks have always had the ability to kind of flip up the seat, and this is certainly no exception. If you want to flip up the seats, you can see uh, you'll find a couple of things. There's a little bit of storage underneath here. You'll find the subwoofer for the 14-speaker Bose Performance Series audio system, which sounds pretty good. And then, uh, but in terms of covered storage, lockable storage, I don't see any of that over here. But GM may offer that as an accessory which I'll have to find out later on if they do. Now, pulling the seats back down, let me get in here and show you guys the space. Now, GMC says you get around 39 inches of legroom back here. Now, I did expect a little bit more space uh, considering how big this truck is. I imagine something like the F-150 Lightning is gonna offer more rear seat space, but this is certainly not small. The floor is almost completely flat here, which is nice. There's a small little hump here, which is pretty, uh, really, really small. You can see over here on the center console for the rear, you have rear seat air vents, you have two USB charging ports, you have heated rear seats, which is nice, no cooled rear seats. And then you have your own set of climate control. So it's technically a tri-zone climate control. You have two storage pockets over here. The materials are basically the same as the front, kind of carried over with that texturized uh, vinyl material, which feels very durable, uh, along with a soft touch padded area over here with that uh, bronze accents. Over here, you can see, fold this down. You have a pretty nice armrest with two cup holders. The vehicle itself, because it's 87 inches wide almost, you can easily fit three people, three people across. These panels over here above the rear also come out. However, it should be noted that this cannot be removed on the rear because again, it creates kind of like a T-top look that's all going to aid in the structural integrity of the vehicle. However, when you take off all the panels and you roll down this rear window over here, it really does give you an open air experience. And I think that's something really cool. Now I'm noticing a couple things. First of all, open this up. You can see there is a little bit of covered storage there. So I wasn't expecting that. You could easily hide a few things in here that you don't want people to find. Uh, and it looks like you can also pull on some of these straps over here and this seat should fold down as well. But overall, the rear seat area is certainly usable. There's a couple of cool features in here. Uh, however, I was expecting uh, GM to at least add cool seats, but overall it's going to be a nice place to spend time for even taller folks. Now before we go into the powertrain specs, I want to answer the million dollar question. Does this electric super truck have a frunk? The answer is yes. There's a button over here you can basically press. It's a power actuated frunk, as you can see. And right now, there are a bunch of hard uh, storage, or storage cubbies in here that allow you to put the each of the freedom panel tops in here. Now this, you can essentially take it out, but you can see it's really a nice way to organize the tops where GM actually puts uh, a little instruction booklet on the order of where you want to put the tops in. It even shows you where they fit on the actual uh, roof itself, which again will help you keep it organized. These essentially just lift out. But when you start taking out these panels, you're going to notice the frunk has a ton of space. Now, it doesn't have as much space as the new F-150 Lightning, and I don't have the official figure uh, for the frunk. It looks like somewhere around 10 cubic feet, which is a lot. Uh, but again, the fact that this is built off of uh, a dedicated EV platform really allowed the engineers and the designers to give you that extra storage space up front. 
So now that we talked about the exterior design and the massive frunk, a lot of you are probably wondering what's powering the damn thing. Well, right in front of me, as you can see, is the massive battery pack. It essentially lines the entire floor of the vehicle. It's built off of a dedicated EV platform. It's a 205 kilowatt hour battery pack with 200 usable capacity. This is the largest battery pack available for now. There are gonna be less expensive versions that have slightly smaller battery packs. And then right in front of me again is the rear electric motor. There's two of them back here. And GM actually tells us that they designed the rear electric motor to be very low to the ground because they didn't want this to be too high up because that would essentially raise up the bed back here and make it a little bit less usable for owners of the vehicle and that was very important to them and then as we walk around the rest of the truck uh, we're going to come up to the front electric motor there is one electric motor here at the front again they had to make this rather shallow in its design so they could give you more space uh, for that frunk which has a ton of room now let's talk about the specs because like i said earlier this is built off of the 800 volt architecture it can charge up to 350 kilowatt hours and with the three electric motors you get up to a thousand horsepower that's right this huge massive truck offers up a thousand horsepower and 1200 pound feet of torque now that is the rating at the crankshaft gm actually announced like an 11,500 pound feet of torque but that's at the wheels that's a little bit more of a deceiving number you got a one-speed reduction gear transmission, of course. It's going to come with all-wheel drive as standard. GM calls it E four-wheel drive because it has some uh, characteristics of an electronic locking differential where you could lock uh, the rear axles together. You can also do true torque vectoring because it's got two electric motors uh, at the rear. As I mentioned earlier, towing capacity is around 7,500 pounds. You'll go 329 miles on a full charge. This vehicle has an onboard charger of around 11 and a half kilowatt hours, which means you could charge this vehicle from 20 to 80% at your home level two charger in roughly 16 hours. So that's twice the amount of time as something like a Ford Mustang Mach-E or a Tesla Model Y on a level two, because again, we have a massive battery pack Expect, expect roughly 45 minutes on a DC fast charger, a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger to go from 20 to 80%. Now, in terms of the 0 to 60 performance, GM says this truck will do 0 to 60 in three seconds. We're gonna try that out using the Watts to Freedom launch control. Um, that is among the quickest accelerating vehicles in the segment. It matches the Rivian R1T. It's about a second and a half faster versus what Ford claims for the F-150 Lightning. This is a big vehicle with a massive battery pack. So the GMC Hummer V is certainly no lightweight. As this truck sits, it weighs in at just under 9,000 pounds, which is quite frankly, the heaviest production uh, non-commercial vehicle that I've probably ever driven or tested. Yeah, so go ahead and put it in drive. We're already in the mode. Okay. So we've already optimized the battery temperatures, the drive unit temperatures, all the power electronics. We've lowered the vehicle nearly, actually a little over three and a half inches. Okay, wow. Curb. Um, basically stiffened up the shocks, adjusted the steering. We're ready to launch this thing. So go ahead and put left foot brake all the way to the floor. Okay. Right foot on the Excel pedal all the way to the floor. Now when we see the blinking orange, there you go on okay. the left. And we're uh, ready to go? When you're ready, take your foot off the brake. <laughs> and break. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, you definitely feel the weight when you're braking, but this thing uh, doesn't feel that heavy when it's accelerating. It just, wow, 3.49 seconds. We actually did a run earlier and got 3.4 when he was driving. So <laughs> I believe it when you guys say three seconds. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, you, you get rid of the dirt and the wet from the rain here. And uh, you can legit get a three second. Yeah, so it, I should seconds. mention it is a little bit wet outside and we're at about 85% state of charge. Yep. So this thing would only be faster if it was drier and we had a full charge on the battery. Yep. We've done about 30 of these launches now. With this 30 point. launches and yep. you're still doing three and a half like in yep. these less than ideal conditions. Yes. <laughs> so real quick, if you want to do crab walk, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and stop the vehicle. Okay. I'll show you here with the uh, press and hold of the steering switch. Get this pretty cool oh, that's, graphic. Oh, that's super cool right there. <laughs> and when that circle closes, that means we're good to go. So okay. I recommend hands on the wheel nine and three. Okay. Just 180 degrees of steering wheel input back and forth. And we'll just kind of creep forward nice and easy. You can just kind of get a feel for oh, wow. how the thing is pointed forward but moving <laughs> sideways. That, that is a really weird feeling. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've never felt anything like that before. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
So yesterday I had the opportunity to drive this vehicle with the lead development engineer and try the WTF launch control mode. And I have to tell you guys, 3.4 seconds zero to 60 in a vehicle this big, this wide, this massive, this tall, uh, is a very strange sensation. Sadly, Rob didn't get a chance to experience that, but we are here today on day two and we're finally driving the Hummer EV out on the road. Now it's interesting because we're here in Arizona in Phoenix and it's raining which is strange, but it is cool because we noticed this car has three wiper blades. <laughs> Wasn't expecting it to have three wiper blades. It reminds me of the F FJ Cruiser uh, that Toyota used to have a couple of years ago. And your 0 to 60 wasn't wet and dusty. It was, it was a little bit wet and dusty yesterday. So uh, I believe GM, when they say they should be able to do it in around three seconds, and look, there's a Kia EV6 right there. So EVs are the future and we are driving probably the most excessive stupid insane EV ever but it's so Hummer uh, because just going down the road here I'm noticing just how incredibly wide this truck is it's 87 inches wide a whopping six inches wider I believe than the H2 which that vehicle was already a stupidly wide truck uh, but since we're out on the highway we're gonna drive this on the highway for a little bit we're heading to a golf course where we're gonna take it off-roading and we're gonna do another driving scene I'm gonna see if I can try to floor it again uh, from a stop at that point but GM wanted me to try the super cruise function so we're on this uh, highway right here there's a gray steering wheel on the instrument panel push this button right here it turns blue and then green and now the super cruise is engaged uh, and this is the next gen super cruise so this is the same one that i tested in the new cadillac escalade this vehicle will keep in the lane for me on interstates where it has the mapping already routed out gm says they have over 200,000 miles of roads mapped out for this uh, super cruise system and i can keep my hands completely off the wheel and it allows you to do that because there's a camera watching my face um, so as long as it sees that i'm paying attention to the road uh, it will drive itself essentially completely hands-free uh, which gm super cruise is one of the best ones that i've seen this is still very, very good. Even though this vehicle is so wide, the steering just keeps the truck perfectly in the lane and it also has auto lane changes. So if I signal to the right, it checks for an opening and then it automatically moves the truck over and then re-centers me back in the lane. And I do have to turn off the turn signal, but really simple stuff. So all of this works really well. Uh, and I still think that GM's Super Cruise is one of the best systems in the business, better than uh, Ford's Blue Cruise function that I have in my Mach-E and other Ford Lincoln products that we've tested. So this is all very nice. Now, uh, I do also want to point out that when we started this drive, it was showing 100% charge and it showed about 301 uh, miles on a full charge. Now that's not the 329 that uh, GMC says this will do, but when I get this vehicle for a week to test, I'll do a more thorough range testing with it. Remember, this is one of the biggest battery packs that you can buy. It's a double stacked battery pack. 200 kilowatt hours is usable, uh, which is just insane. Uh, and it really gives this truck uh, best in class range. They say it's better range versus the Rivian R1T and the Ford F-150 Lightning. However, those trucks have smaller battery packs. So it's not necessarily a, a fair comparison. I would expect this truck to get better range. I would expect it to do, you know, 400 miles at least, but because it's got the aerodynamic efficiency of literally a house, um, it's not going to be any better than, you know, what it's going to do now. But here on the highway, uh, it just, it cruises very nice. Although I am hearing a ton of road noise from the tires because of these big 35 inch tall mud terrains. Um, the fun thing about these EVs though, is like put your foot down and <laughs> this is kind of scary when you do that. I mean, it's got incredible acceleration, <laughs> especially uh, scaring uh, people out on the road when they're just like, oh my God, there's this big 9,000 pound fat beast coming at me. But Florida here again, very impressive performance. Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, who's tailgating with the rear tire? <laughs> yeah, so now it doesn't feel obviously as brutally fast as when you have the vehicle in WTF mode because that will lower the vehicle. It'll give the battery, it'll prep the battery pack to give you max power. In regular drive modes, you put your foot down here, it is pretty instantaneous, but what you feel all the time is the body flexing because of that air suspension, because it's got so much power, so much weight. Um, what is cool about the Hummer EV is I showed you guys the crab walk earlier. Uh, this also has four wheel steering in a sense where the rear rear wheels will turn up to 10 degrees uh, at lower speeds in opposite directions or in the same 
uh, direction at higher speed. So that gives the Hummer EV a really tight turning radius. In fact, the turning radius I saw without four wheel steering engaged is around 44 feet, which is huge. With it engaged, it shrinks it down to 37 feet. 37 feet is like what you expect probably like a Chevrolet Cruze to probably make a U-turn in. Maybe 35 feet or something like that. But this makes the truck incredibly maneuverable, which is necessary because this is quite frankly, very much a Hummer in its DNA. It feels excessive, it feels huge, it feels wide. It gives you this commanding view of the road uh, and you'll essentially just feel like king of the road. So GM did a fantastic job with making this truck uh, carry on the Hummer, the Hummer legacy and name. What, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not going to use the WTF mode, but I do want to just try launching it from a stop here and just see what it can do. Ready? Okay, one, two, three. Definitely doesn't feel as brutal as the WTF mode, but oh my god. Oh yeah, not even <laughs> 5.4 seconds. So yes, we got two seconds faster yesterday using wow. the WTF mode. So that really does prepare the vehicle for quite an insane launch. Because remember, it lowers the truck down, uh, it preps the battery pack and gives you maximum output. And it even tells you that you're going to be accelerating the wear on the vehicle when you do that. <laughs> now I will say that uh, this vehicle feels scary when it gets up to that speed very quickly because you literally start feeling the weight of this truck as the speeds go higher. And then as you guys saw yesterday when I was trying to brake, as soon as my foot went to like hard on the brakes, it basically went almost down to the floor and uh, you could hear the tires screeching. So my, my recommendation, if you guys own this truck and you plan to launch it several times, make sure you have enough braking room because uh, this is still an eight, a 9,000 pound beast and GM put some pretty big, massive brakes on this thing, but uh, it's gonna take some time to stop this vehicle. It is still, you know, you can't beat the laws of physics. Now I do wanna talk about uh, the regen braking in this truck. So as soon as I lift off the throttle here, um, which I have it set to the highest, this is the max regen and it's very Tesla-like. It's very one pedal drive put my foot down here you can hear it's augmenting noise and I'm also having to like counter steer I have to steer this way as the truck wants to go this way it's very odd feeling and that's that's what kind of reminds you that this has the power it has the weight it has the instantaneous torque but these 35 inch tall mud terrain tires are not the best choice obviously you're going to want to be on road sticky you know summer road tires to get better better grip but uh that's kind of the beauty about this truck is it has that scariness but it also has that just excessiveness it's just a ridiculous vehicle to drive uh, and i wish that we were under better road conditions like this rain here in phoenix is super super odd <laughs> and i guess the g-forces are so strong that the suction cup didn't uh, <laughs> allow that thing to stick very well to the uh, to the windshield but uh, we've been driving this truck for probably i want to say about 40 miles it's gone down to 258 miles of range now i was driving it on the highway at super cruise i was flooring it a few times doing this is <laughs> so much fun to do when you have an unsuspecting passenger in the in the front seat but uh on the road it certainly feels and drives like a hummer should does it feel like a super truck it just feels like a very heavy excessive vehicle i keep using that word because that's what hummer is all about uh, visibility is fine the noise in this vehicle however is loud like right now we're going about 65 miles an hour you hear just the constant tire drumming these uh inf the infinity roof here with the sky view panels um obviously this is like a plexiglass material doesn't really provide much in terms of isolation from the outside elements uh, so yeah, you're gonna have to make that compromise a little bit if you're expecting a nicer or quieter interior This isn't gonna give that to you and also the interior itself isn't the most luxurious in its materials You can tell that GM cut corners here and didn't give us the most luxurious feeling cabin Especially for the hundred and ten thousand dollar price tag, but overall out on the road We uh, we got a chance to see a Hummer H2 a yellow one and the I don't know if the owner was not happy about seeing the truck He did pull his phone out later and take a picture, but he was not uh, letting us pass him for one point. So it was kind of cool to see to, to see the two vehicles back to back. Uh, and I do think that uh, GM made the right move by bringing the Hummer name back in an all electric form. So it wouldn't be a Hummer media drive without an off-road trail to drive on. And uh, we're here following a caravan of Hummer EVs, which is a pretty cool site. And it's really gonna give us the ability to test out the off-road capability of this truck. Remember, as I said earlier, up to 16 inches of ground clearance almost in the extract mode. 
Uh, it offers up to 13 inches of suspension travel in the front and the rear. I have the vehicle in its terrain mode. We were in off-road mode earlier, and GMC has us on this kind of uh, desert off-road trail where there's some rocky terrain, there's some ruts, uh, there are some dips. Uh, you can really see uh, these trucks in front of us with the rear wheel steering helping out. Remember, this truck will steer the rear wheels up to 10 degrees in the opposite direction uh, when you're going at low speeds and it really helps with the maneuverability. However, there's no getting around the fact that this is still an 87 inch wide truck. And I have to say, going through this narrow trail, I was noticing some of the trees and shrubs uh, scratching up the paint. So sorry, Hummer, uh, but that's what happens when you have a really, really wide, wide truck. So as we approach this muddy downhill descent, the Hummer EV makes traversing this kind of terrain is super easy. You've got uh, almost 16 inches of ground clearance. You have nearly 13 inches of wheel articulation. You have these 18 inch mud terrain tires uh, on 35 inch tall tires. So we're gonna be testing that out now more than ever. And it is a little slippery because it's been raining uh, and I have the vehicle in its terrain mode. It's in low right now and it's kind of just modulating the brakes for me, which is nice. All those skid plates are also gonna help protect the battery. I can feel it sliding a little bit. I can also feel the, re the rear wheel steering helping this truck kind of get down the hill. Definitely a little scary feeling. He said, stay to the right, I think is what he told, said. Left. Le no, he said stay to the right. He's telling you to stay to the left. Oh, <laughs> oh God, okay, I can't see. <laughs> All right, so in low, I definitely feel it breaking for me. Wow, this is definitely slippery. You can feel the truck sliding down the hill, but it also makes it kind of easy to do uh, because of all of the off-road stuff that this truck comes with. The four-wheel drive system does offer uh, a front and rear electronic locking diff, which I don't even need to use it now. It just kind of crawled down the hill really easily. Now we're about to go up the hill uh, and I barely have to touch the throttle. That's the cool thing about the uh, Hummer EV, the fact that it's all electric. So there's a little slippage there. You can feel it breaking that wheel and sending power to another wheel. But it's impressive how, even on slippery, muddy terrain, the Hummer EV makes getting over this kind of obstacle really easy. So here we're starting uh, one final climb on this off-road trail and GMC had me put it back into terrain mode. It's a rather steep incline uh, and it really showcases, again, the capability, the articulation, the ground clearance this truck has uh, and the four-wheel drive system because we do have features like an electronic locking rear diff and front diffs, which we shouldn't really need in this moment. This car truck has so much torque that you can essentially just basically feather the throttle and it will allow you to scale almost any terrain uh, with a light touch of the throttle. And that's kind of the best thing about driving these electric vehicles. Um, so I had my camera guy run out in the rain. He's such a trooper. Uh, and uh, you can see I have the uh, camera showing the underbody of the vehicle. You can actually see the rear wheels turn in that camera screen, which is pretty cool. Uh, another thing I also noticed driving it off-road, the vehicle makes like an augmented sound, almost sounds like a V8, a low humming noise, uh, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, this is something that I wouldn't try in like a Subaru Forester, that's for sure, or even like a vehicle that has less than 10 inches of ground clearance. But let's go ahead and see what this truck can do. So we're gonna start scaling this and I have it in terrain mode still, just give it a little more throttle. It's, you can see the wheel articulating right there in that little display on the camera screen, which is really cool. That's awesome, wow. <laughs> this thing's just kind of crawling right up it. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna actually switch the camera view here because uh, I can't see the front of the vehicle. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna start going down the hill and this shouldn't be that bad at all actually, but <laughs> the truck has that auto braking that are not auto braking the, uh... oh my, it's starting to hail out here. Okay, Phoenix, <laughs> let me let my editor back in. <laughs> Did you have a nice shower, Rob? <laughs> uh, what the hell? What is this? This is Arizona. <laughs> is it uh, cold outside? So it's not really not enough for hail. This is hail, holy crap. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Well, well you welcome us at, uh, 
Right, thanks for joining us at this, uh, as it literally starts raining hail, pellets onto the Hummer EV, and you can hear all the noise because of all that plexiglass in here. But uh, yeah, didn't think I'd see weather like this out in Arizona, but Hummer definitely proved that the uh, this super truck of theirs can easily handle on-road driving as well as some pretty gnarly terrain off the pavement. And uh, you kind of feel very safe, especially when you have all this terrible weather happening around you. Yeah, when you're inside the car. Yes, when you're inside the car. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <laughs> So after spending the last couple of days driving the new GMC Hummer EV, I'm pretty impressed with what GMC is offering here. We drove it on the road, we drove it off the road, we launched it using the WTF modes, and we also drove it through a freak rainstorm that included some hail. I'm pretty happy to say that this truck has all the usual traits that I expect from the Hummer brand. It's excessive, it's capable, uh, it's inefficient, it's in your face. However, they're also introducing a couple of new traits from Hummer that I didn't expect. It has a ton of tech on the inside, and it's also so fast as hell. Zero to 60 in three seconds in WTF mode is just absolutely insane. And even driving this truck out on the road, it got so much attention out there. And here off-road, the capability that the electric drivetrain gives you is just unheard of. It's truly something different. Now, is it an electric super truck? That's debatable, but I will say that the entire package that GMC is offering here is entirely unique. In fact, I haven't had a chance to drive the new Rivian R1T or the F-150 Lightning, which are going to be direct competitors to this vehicle, along with the Tesla Cybertruck, if Tesla ever actually comes out with that vehicle. But uh, this entire package here is available now, and this vehicle will start at around $110,000 for this first edition model. Now, if it's too expensive, GMC will offer, starting next year and in 2024, less expensive versions of this truck. It's going to start at the base end at just under $80,000. That's before, of course, the $7,500 federal tax credit. Uh, but this one here, the Edition 1 model, stickering for around $112,000 with destination, does make it a pretty pricey proposition. The interior certainly doesn't feel like it's worth that much in terms of luxury, but in terms of tech and the speed and the capability, it certainly offers a combination that is really hard to beat and that's precisely why uh, GMC is going to be billing this truck as a super truck and it certainly has some of those capabilities and qualities. So with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 GMC Hummer EV truck. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.